Hey Killer Bees, it's Paula B from PaulaBeeFitness.com and on tap today I have something completely and utterly different for us. You guys, I know that a lot of you have been planning on maybe your very first 5k this spring and I don't know if you're anything like me but every spring race that I have in the next month or two has been either cancelled or postponed. And so today I wanted to do a virtual 5k with you. You guys, we are going outside, or at least I am, <laughs> we're going to run 5k. It is about 45 degrees which is freezing cold for me so we're going to get started with a warm-up and that means that we are starting with our arm circles and high knees just like we do for all of our workouts you guys our warm-up is a little bit different today it's mainly focused on opening up your chest so we can breathe well but also making sure that your legs are moving through their full range of motion that way we are ready to walk and run or run or whatever you'd like to do come on through guys <laughs> i'm filming a video today <laughs> We are outside doing something very different, you guys. I tell you what, this is, this is the nature of the world we live in right now. You're doing everything different. You're outside of your comfort zone too. And I totally appreciate and understand. Let's go ahead and do some arm crossers with booty kickers. I totally appreciate and understand how, how weird this is. And I want you to know that whether this is your first 5k or maybe a, your millionth 5k, I love running with you. Now we are going to be, or I am going to be outside today, which means that I have my son on a bicycle accompanying me so that he can film me while I'm running. I want you to know that if you do get motion sick, this might not be the video for you. Truly, this one, this one's different, you guys. The world is a different place. <laughs> Let's go ahead and do some leg swingers and I know this one's a little bit tough we're swinging back and forth making sure that your hip is open and ready for that running motion I am gonna take a couple of walking breaks today but for the most part I am gonna be running I do have my watch on so we'll be going 3.1 miles by my distance <laughs> your distance as they say may vary depending on I'm gonna go ahead and switch legs may vary depending on your pace and whether or not you're running around or in place or what you're doing for your race today. I know lots of my bees are going to be on the mini trampolines, so that's kind of hard to judge distance on that too. No matter what you do, my friends, I hope we have a great time today. So are you ready? I'm totally ready. Let's go. <laughs> All right, you guys, are you ready for this? We're doing something new today. On your marks, get set, and go. <laughs> okay, so I don't know if you have ever run out in the world with a bicycle entourage, <laughs> but I never have before. This is, this is something really different for all of us, you guys. You know, I don't wanna, I don't wanna make too much or too little of what is going on in the world right now with our current health scare and everything. But this is all different. And the fact is that one of the best things that you can do for yourself is to stay healthy, to stay with as many of your routines as you can. For me personally, that means running. Running is, it's a sanity saver for me. I like to run outside. I do run inside, obviously, with you guys sometimes too. I like to move in lots of different ways. I mean, obviously you guys know, we work out together. I like to do strength training. I like to do cardio. I like to stay active. And I feel, for me personally, that that is one of the best things that I can do, you know, while we're practicing social distancing, while we're being extra careful right now with everybody's health. It means that you need to be careful with both your physical health and, frankly, your mental health. Staying active can go a long, long way towards both of those things. So you guys, making sure that you have caught your breath, that you are breathing rhythmically, whew, and ready for a good day. Hi there. <laughs> Whether you are indoors or outdoors, I know we're gonna see quite a few people today. It has been rainy for the last several days, and it happens to be, well, cold, like I said, but also really, really nicely 
dry right now. And so I happen to know here on this creek trail near my house that we're going to see a lot of people taking advantage of it. Next couple of days of weather still looking kind of unsettled. So I know that especially here in California. <laughs> We've had such a mild winter. We were so blessed with such a warm winter. This rain has been super weird. So I know I'm super happy to get out into it today. <sighs> You're doing such an awesome job. Now, when I was planning out my route, I was trying to decide exactly how far 3.1 miles is. And I think I know, because <laughs> I'm pretty sure I know. But also, you're along for the adventure today of us figuring out exactly where we're going, how far, and what it's going to look like. <sighs> Making sure that you're breathing rhythmically. You know, we're not really trying to run any kind of a race pace today. Hi there. We're just out for a good time. But if you want to, you could totally take today with some intervals. We are just about a third of a mile in. And that means that we've been running for about three minutes. Now, if you are used to running with intervals, you can take walking breaks anytime you want to. I'm gonna take a walking break at just about the one mile mark just to kind of catch my breath and probably at the two mile mark also. Now, if you'd like to, you could go a little faster too. That would be all right. You know, if you are making up for a race that you missed, it might be a fun time to really kind of push yourself today. I actually had a race that was scheduled for last weekend, as well as a race scheduled for this upcoming weekend. And neither one of them was gonna be much of a race <laughs> for me personally. I just ran a 50K a couple weeks ago on leap day on the 29th of February. And so I knew that I am not in any manner ready to be racing a 5K because that's a really different kind of distance. The kind of shape that you're in to run a 50K, for me personally, a 50K, which is 31 miles, in case you didn't know that, it is, it's kind of like an all-you-can-eat buffet with a little bit of running thrown in there. I mean, it truly is an all-day affair. It took me not quite seven and a half hours to complete mine. And there's aid stations with all kinds of food every like four or five miles. And so you get to stop and there's plenty of walking involved. I mean, especially with that kind of distance, it's trail running. And what that means around here is that we were up in the foothills on our way up to the Sierra Nevadas, which means that there was all kinds of climbing, all kinds of descending. There was a lot of terrain, a lot of rocks, a lot of dirt. There was, um, let's see, this time there wasn't any creek crossings or river crossings. I didn't get especially muddy. Oh, no, that's not true. There was, there was one particularly large, like river slash creek crossing. You can go a little faster, buddy. There we go. Awesome. So my shoes did get wet and muddy that day, but not too bad. But so being able to run kind of slowly all day long is very, very, very different from being able to run your absolute top speed for let's say a half an hour or so. And so I knew darn well the last week's race and this week's coming race weren't gonna be my top speed <laughs> by any stretch. They were definitely gonna be closer to 50K speed than 5K speed. And that's the great thing about racing different distances at different times. You can get a feel for what your body is capable of doing and you can just enjoy yourself sometimes. Honestly, 
I really enjoy myself at the longer distances because you get to go so slow, because you get to eat while you're running, <laughs> because for so much of the day, there's just really not a lot of pressure on me personally. The fast people, yes, there's pressure on them to do their best, but for me, it was much more. Now we're crossing a street here, so I might have to hang on for just a quick second. Ah, I guess I'm taking a walking break anyways. All right, and here we go. <laughs> So that was a nice little walking break. We are just almost a mile in. We're about three quarters of a mile in. So that was a nice little catch your breath right there. Awesome. Here we go. A little bit of downhill. We can really go a little faster to go down. <laughs> Not much faster, just a little. You know, that's the fun thing about a distance like this. At three miles, it's plenty of distance. I mean, especially if you are new to running, new to 5Ks, there's plenty of ground to cover in three miles that you can really kind of vary your speed, vary your effort, and get a feel for what feels good to you. For me personally, this is, well, this is a moderate effort <laughs> that feels like a big effort, <laughs> partly because I'm talking and partly because at this age, I've noticed that it really takes me like a month or two before I am fully 100% recovered from a 50K effort. You know, I love running long distances, but I'm also finding that they're taking a lot more out of me than is fun anymore. And it's kind of, it's why I have at least temporarily retired from trail racing. This year in 2020, I'm going to be doing a lot more road racing. In fact, I'm only doing road racing this year because I wanted to go with short enough distances that I can really recover very easily and I can really really think about my training in a different way. I've been running ultras for so long now that, well, again, I've kind of slowed down. It's really funny when you go longer, and I apologize, a lot of road noise here because I am on a major street. We're turning a corner here. Awesome job. We're just about a mile in. And then we're gonna turn off on, the, on this path again. Not too long on the road. Awesome. And the fact is, I kind of want to see what kind of speed I still have in me. It has been two and a half years since I've run on the road in a race at all. That's our one mile, so I'm gonna take a real quick little walking break here. Catch my breath. Ooh, doggies. Ah. And show you some of these beautiful flowers here when we go a little bit further. All those pretty pink and purple flowers next to me. Okay, I apologize. This is hard for my son while I'm doing a walking break, so we're gonna go ahead and run so that he doesn't fall off the bike. Go ahead, buddy. <laughs> I know it's even harder to go slow than it is to go fast. This is what I tell everybody all the time. It's significantly harder to move slow. Go ahead, you can go faster than it is to move fast. Moving fast just feels fun and free and easy. Moving slow takes some real core work. <laughs> My son is laughing at me right now. He has plenty of core strength, plenty. <laughs> Oh my gosh, you guys. But so it's been about two and a half years since I've done a road race at all. And it's been, well, by the time I actually get to do another 5K, it's been three years since I have raced a 5K. And I've changed a lot since then, <laughs> let's be honest. I was, well, geez, three years ago, I was 47 years old, I was young. I had a lot of spring in my step. Now, now things are kind of different. And the way that I'm looking at this year of running and racing is that I get to challenge my 50-year-old body. I get to challenge 
a different kind of person than I was three years ago. I'm, I often joke about when you enter a new age group that you get to set all new PRs. And that's pretty much how I feel this year is that anything I do, it's just gonna feel, if not like a PR, a personal record, it's gonna feel like a personal victory. Oh my gosh, it is raining. <laughs> we're crossing the street again, but it looks like there's no cars. So we're gonna be able to go. And now's where I'm gonna start kind of looking at my watch a little bit to make sure that I know where our turnaround is. We're gonna turn around at 1.55 miles or two and a half kilometers, if that's how you're doing things. So that when we get back to where we started, that we'll be right there at 3.1 miles. You're doing such a good job. Making sure if you've got water or something to drink, take water breaks, take walking breaks. You know, the great thing about a virtual race is that you're really not racing anybody. <laughs> I mean, I guess I'm kind of racing my son on the bike, but he's definitely gonna win <laughs> because he has to keep the camera in front of me, but also he's on a bike. <sighs> awesome job. if you can hear that probably not I know that my microphone is actually pretty good about keeping the sound really close but there's a couple of kids in a kayak on the creek next to me <laughs> listening to music really loud and it's kind of funny because this creek is actually normally quite small but it's been raining like I mentioned and so it's really wide and really deep right now like you could actually put a kayak in it it's kind of cool so you guys how you feeling we're almost halfway. We're at 1.3 miles. Now's a good time to kind of assess. What are you feeling like for the second half? Now, especially if this is a racing situation, now is the time where you might be thinking kind of strategically. You know, who's in front of me? Who can I pass? How am I feeling? Do I need to take a walking break? Do I need to stop at the water station? Generally speaking, at a 5K, you're probably gonna have an aid station at the halfway point, more or less. Some 5Ks will have an aid station every mile, which is really nice. Especially, like when I first started racing, it was especially nice to take those little walking breaks. If you are brand new to running, or walking and running, it's totally okay to take as many walking breaks as you need. You know what? Virtual race, real race, no matter what. The only person you're ever racing is yourself. The only person you have anything to prove anything to is yourself. Again, I don't know if you can hear it. There's a bunch of geese about to land. This is why I love living here close to the creek. We have all kinds of waterfowl, all kinds of, of nature right here in the middle of the city. We see beavers sometimes. We see muskrats. <laughs> we see my son weaving all over the road and trying to knock me off the road. I mean, it's, it's just wild out here, you guys. Okay, we are at 1.51, so we are gonna turn around. Buddy, let's make a left turn and get on the sidewalk and make just a big rectangle here. Do you know what I'm saying? Awesome, okay. I wasn't sure where we were gonna turn around. I wasn't sure if this was gonna be a possibility, but this is a really nice way that we don't have to stop right in the middle of the road. All right, all right, you guys. Water station, if you need one. Or, I mean, it's the back half. We're heading in. How do you feel? You feel like you got a little bit more in the tank? You wanna race the back half? I know, me either. <laughs> so much of running or walking 5K is simply the joy of getting it done. It doesn't matter if it's your first or your millionth or the first one in a new age group. They're all special. Every single finish line has something for you in the way of feeling accomplished. 
honestly. I mean, I run three miles pretty regularly. It's a pretty easy distance for me, relatively speaking. But today, doing something really different, being way outside my comfort zone, talking to my phone in public, <laughs> it feels, it feels like it's gonna be a victory. It feels like, it feels like something different in this different world. I'm gonna go a little bit faster. There we go. Awesome. Sometimes it feels real nice to just kind of let your legs fly and see what they got. And then sometimes, you know, sometimes you pay for that. <laughs> I've had more than one race where I felt amazing at the beginning and then really struggled at the end. That's, that's probably one of the biggest, trickiest things that I've had to learn over 14 years of running is honestly just how to pace myself at all. It never ceases to amaze me when I'll come home from a run and I'll upload the data from my Garmin or not a Garmin anymore, it's a Sunto, but Garmin is one of those things like Kleenex, like almost everybody has a Garmin watch. So you just kind of say Garmin, even if you don't have one. <laughs> and no matter how amazingly even I felt the entire time I was running, there is always just this huge variation in my pace. And I live someplace pretty flat, so it's not like I'm running hills or anything. Hi there. It's really just my effort, <laughs> my ability to pace myself. And sometimes that's pretty tough. <coughs> Excuse me. I was looking at my watch. <clears throat> We're at 1.8. So probably right after we cross the street again, we'll be just about two miles. And I'll take another quick little walking break, catch our breath, pretend like there's an aid station. If only my son had brought me something to drink, right? <laughs> it's okay. I can handle it. There's enough rain. If I wanted to, I could just tilt my head up and open my mouth. You guys, what a beautiful day to run. You know, I know sometimes, sometimes I hear you guys. Now, to be fair, I know lots of you live in significantly colder, wetter, snowier, icier climates. Most of you do. But sometimes I'll hear you guys say something like, oh, I went for a run with you today because it was raining outside. And I want you to know, you are very sweet, but you are not made of sugar. You will not melt in the rain. <laughs> it is totally okay to go for a run in rainy weather. I think we can cross. Looks like no cars. Awesome. Ooh, lots of cars coming though. So that was good timing. Awesome. I actually really enjoy running in the rain, partly because, okay, partly because I just feel like, like I'm doing something that other people won't do. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like I just said, I get a lot of comments from people who are like, well, I didn't want to run in the rain. But partly, again, I live in California, our rain, you know, it's 45 degrees. It's cold for me. I've got my gloves on, but I'm also wearing a tank top and shorts. It's very pleasant out here. It's not, it's not a freezing rain like I know lots of you experience. All right, we are just about at two miles when my watch beeps here at two. I'm gonna take a little quick walking break. Not very long though, because I know how tough that is. Just a quick one. Whew. A couple of steps, catch my breath. Now, here's the thing. When you take a walking break, it's not a stopping break. It really is a chance to catch your breath, but keep moving forward. And this one's gonna be real quick. When we cross that crack right there, we're gonna get right up. I know you can't see the crack, but here we go. We're running again. <laughs> because you guys, even if, even if you are having a real hard time, here's the great thing about being two miles into a three mile run. You are way over halfway done. You've only, yes, it's air quotes, got a mile left. You can manage one more mile. You've already done the hard part. You got past that turnaround. You got past the halfway point. Now we're just heading for the finish line. And that's the best part. Make sure that you're still breathing. There we go. We're gonna pick it up a little bit when we're out on the main street so we don't have too much road noise because it is a major, 
major street in my town and I know how loud it is. So we want to get past that as quickly as we can. What a good job you're doing. I feel so lucky that I live someplace that I have a trail like this so close where, yeah, I do have to cross that one street, but honestly, most times of the day, it's not super busy and I can get in a 5K anytime I want to. Awesome, yep, here's our little speed interval. <laughs> Trying to reduce that road noise. Woo! Awesome. All right. Now for me, because I do run here pretty frequently, this feels like coming home. This feels, <coughs> excuse me, like the part of the trip that I know. We can pick this up because we're heading in. Do you feel it? Do you feel that excitement? When you get to a certain point in any race, honestly, no matter how much you have struggled, no matter how many years you have been racing, there's always a point when you start to feel like, oh, I am pretty close to the end. I am gonna finish this thing. I am gonna make this happen. And it has a whole different energy than everything else. The start of the race, you know, you've got lots of excitement. And nine times out of 10, you go out of the gate way too fast. We all do that, it's okay. It's a learned skill to not go way too fast at the start. But then somewhere around the middle, you start to think, oh, I'm only halfway done. <laughs> and it starts to get a little bit, a little bit rougher on the edges. And then, right around two thirds, this is my, my own personal little rule of thumb. Right around two thirds is where I almost always start to kind of mentally struggle. Because you're past halfway, you know you've gone a long way, but you still kind of have a ways to go. And that's where you just have to grit it out. If running has taught me anything, it has taught me this. Sometimes you just have to keep going. It doesn't have to look pretty. It doesn't have to look strong. It doesn't have to feel good. You just have to keep going. Whew. And there we go. Nice, just that one car. And here we are across the street for the last time. Awesome job, you guys. Awesome job. Here we go. A little bit of downhill. Start to feel strong. Woo wee. Make sure you're still breathing. Check it in with your body. We're past the two thirds. We're about that point where you could start feeling really good about the effort that you've put in. You know, here on our virtual race, I will tell you that you can already hear the finish line, <laughs> even though you probably can't. But I can start cheering for you. This, this is not something that everybody does. Having the courage to sign up for a 5K, whether you run it in a big crowd or all by yourself in your living room, it's a big deal. It is something to be super, super proud of. I remember the first time I ran in a race. I made my husband come with me <laughs> because I was so afraid to do it alone. I, I knew I could finish. I felt, I felt pretty good about finishing, but I really didn't know, I didn't know what it was gonna be like. I didn't know what the crowd was gonna be like. I didn't know what it was gonna feel like to run, you know, three miles in a racing situation. It was scary. It was super scary. And I was a lot younger. <laughs> like, yeah, I was in my 30s. I was a lot younger. And now, after all these years, I mean, now I know what it feels like. And I still get kind of nervous. I still get very excited at finish lines. I still feel amazing every time I go for a run, whether I'm really racing or virtual racing. It's always an accomplishment, you guys. 
and in, because of that, I have something for you. <laughs> when you finish today, I want you to make sure that you open up the description box down below this video. I have a certificate of completion for you. Because I know, I know that especially if this was your first 5K, hey there, that this was, this was not what you planned. This was not what you thought it was gonna be like. You had it in your mind that you were gonna go out in the world and run with probably a couple hundred of your closest running friends, <laughs> people you've never met before. But you thought that you were gonna run, you know, a race out in the world. And I want you to still feel that accomplishment. I want you to still feel like you took part in something with your friends, with me, your best friend. So if you'd like to, you can go to my website. Like I said, there's a link in the description box below and you can print out your certificate of completion because today was a really big day for us. Okay, we are at 2.71. That means that we have just over a quarter of a mile left. And I will tell you a funny story actually about being a quarter mile from the finish line. There was a race I was running quite a few years ago now where I was really putting in my best effort. I mean, I was running hard. And I had been kind of chasing down this girl who looked like she was younger than me. And we were, we've been kind of going back and forth, but mostly she was in front of me. And I really wanted to beat her. Like, I don't know if you get competitive, but I do. I just really wanted to beat this girl. And we were about a quarter mile from the finish line. I could see the finish line. It was around a corner. So I could actually like see the finishing arch. And all of a sudden, this girl that I'd been chasing the whole race pulls over to the side of the road and throws up. <laughs> she had been putting in so much effort that that was too much right there at the end. Hi there, coming around on your left. No worries, hello. Uh, such friendly people on our race cars. But so, needless to say, I passed her. As I passed her, I said, are you okay? She was speaking, she didn't answer me. And I thought, well, sweet, I beat her. <laughs> well, <laughs> that was short-lived. <laughs> I, I did pass her while she was throwing up. And I did feel really good about myself for a couple of seconds. And then she rallied. She passed me right in the finishing shoot. I mean, I was at 3.05 and she passed me back. And then, and then she, you know, she passes me. She's right in front of me at the finish line, of course. She throws up again after she passes the finish line. And then, so I come across the finish line and she turns around and she's like, thank you so much. I spent the whole race racing you. I just wanted to beat you. <laughs> and it was so funny because I, of course, had spent the whole race trying to beat her. Turns out she was like 15 years younger than me. She was, she was just a little thing in her like early 20s. And it was so funny, especially because even though we had run basically the exact same time, she got, I think, either first or second place in her age group. And me, even though I was older, got fourth place in my age group, which is pretty common for me. I almost always get fourth place. You guys, we are at 2.97. That means we have one tenth of a mile to go. And that means no matter where you are, your living room, a race, it means we're picking up the speed. This is how we finish strong. This is how whew, we try not to let the bike get away from us. But man, we give it our best effort. Last tenth of a mile, that's only, I can't do the math. A minute? Less than a minute. It's a good amount of time to really sprint and really feel your best. 3.04, breathing, doing your best. Awesome job. Hi there. Good job. Holding that effort. You can hear the finish line. You can see your family and friends. Everybody's cheering for you. 3.08, almost there. We might have to go up on the street, buddy. It's all right. Sometimes this happens. Your watch might go long. 
your watch might go short. You never know. 3.1! Woohoo! Yes! Awesome, awesome job. Oh my gosh. Put on that metal. Yes. <laughs> my friends, I am so, so, so proud of you. What an effort today. According to my watch, we ran, oopsies, I didn't stop it. Okay, now I'm stopping it. So now it's got me standing here for a couple of seconds. We ran 3.1 miles whew, in 32 minutes and 25 seconds. That is awesome. I hope that was a PR for you. I hope, I always hope that you had such a good time with our workout today. Now here on screen, I'm definitely, absolutely going to have a nice cool down stretch for you. Make sure that your glasses aren't fogging up like mine are, that you cool down, that you get yourself something to drink, that you pat yourself on the back and make sure. I will have it here on screen also, I think, I hope, the link for you to download your certificate of completion. I'm super, super proud of you. Thank you so much for running with me today. Make sure you click that subscribe button before you go and I'll see you in the next video.